Problems keep building for Credit Suisse, with the lender warning it will post a fourth quarter loss. Tuesday's update blamed new legal costs and a slowdown in its trading and wealth management divisions. The bank said it's on track for an overall Q4 loss of around $1.75 billion. Credit Suisse said its investment arm was hit by lower transaction-based revenue. It pointed to a downturn in Asia, plus a return to more normal trading conditions following a bumper couple of years. It's also due to make a fresh legal payment of about $544 million to settle legacy cases related to its investment bank. The lender is trying to change a freewheeling culture that has cost it billions and led to a series of scandals. It wants to rein in its investment bankers and instead look after the fortunes of the world's rich. The firm also wants to reform its risk management culture. But things got off to a bad start this year when Chairman Antonio Horta Azario was forced to resign for breaching Covid protocols. Ericsson beat forecasts in the fourth quarter, helped by booming demand for 5G network gear. That saw adjusted profit climb to almost $1.3 billion, while cash flow hit record levels. The Swedish firm is benefiting as countries around the world roll out next-generation networks. Its sales grew in Europe, North America and Latin America, despite competition from a resurgent Nokia. But China remains a drag. Once a big player there, Ericsson has been largely frozen out following Sweden's ban on Huawei. The firm says revenue there will probably drop for at least one more quarter. Ericsson's next set of earnings will also take a hit from a court battle with Apple. It's wrangling with the US giant over royalty payments for the use of 5G technology in iPhones. That's likely to knock a big chunk off its revenues from patents. Acquisitions remain on the agenda, however. Ericsson has recently spent more than $7 billion buying two companies, and it says there is more M&A activity to come. The Eurozone's economic recovery weakened this month, according to new figures released Monday. The closely watched Composite Purchasing Managers Index dropped to 52.4 in January from 53.3 in December. It's one of the lowest numbers since last February and below analyst projections. A resurgent health crisis is largely to blame. Many European authorities have encouraged people to stay home and avoid socialising. The restrictions have hurt the bloc's dominant services industry, which fell to a nine-month low but was still in growth. There was better news from Germany. Businesses in Europe's largest economy expanded at their fastest rate in four months. The country's manufacturing sector has been helped by easing supply chain bottlenecks. France was a different story though. Business growth there slowed more than forecast due to the health crisis and inflationary pressure. Consumers around the Eurozone have felt the cost of that inflation with prices rocketing. The bloc's Composite Output Prices Index matched the high of November's survey. It also comes after the region's inflation hit a record high last month. A roller coaster ride on Wall Street. Stocks rebounded sharply late in the session Monday from a steep sell off that at one point saw the Nasdaq down nearly 5% and the SP falling into correction territory. Sparking that earlier drop before bargain hunters piled in, mounting geopolitical tension as NATO prepares for a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine, and concerns over an increasingly hawkish Federal Reserve ahead of their policymakers meeting this week. Kramer Capital Research Chief Investment Officer Hillary Kramer says the worst isn't over just yet. We hit the tipping point in terms of the market because the Fed's policies cannot sustain. You can't have 0% Fed funds rate and expect that the market can keep going up. It creates inflation. We are in an inflationary period and the Fed must start raising rates to, to bring back and hold back those reins. And until they do, this market is going to keep going down or we're going to see inflation keep rising. The Dow ended up nearly 100 points. It and the S&P gained more than a quarter percent. The Nasdaq bounced back the most, rising six-tenth percent. One standout stock, even through the sell-off, Kohl's. 
Shares shot up by over a third after Reuters reported that private equity firm Sycamore Partners is readying a bid for the department store chain. This comes just days after activist investment firm Starboard Value proposed a buyout. Several U.S. states sued Google on Monday over what they call deceptive practices in location tracking. Texas, Indiana, Washington State and the District of Columbia all accuse the tech giant of invading users' privacy. The bipartisan suit accuses Google of falsely leading customers to believe that changing their account and device settings would allow them to protect their privacy. But instead, the suit alleges, Google continues to systematically surveil its customers and profits from their data. Google has been quick to respond. Spokesperson Jose Castaneda said the case was based on inaccurate claims and outdated assertions. He added, quote, We have always built privacy features into our products and provided robust controls for location data. We will vigorously defend ourselves and set the record straight. A similar case was filed against Google by the state of Arizona in 2020. It alleged the U.S. firm used deceptive and unfair practices to obtain the location data of users. That lawsuit is pending.